Hey everybody, it's Krista from Colorado Custom Lures. I'm gonna do a quick Badger Patriot teardown and put back together a video essentially. So let's not waste any time. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your needle out. So we'll take the back off and set that down and then loosen your needle chuck, take out your your needle. And then um, I always put the little parts in like a tiny little Dixie cup so that they don't get lost. Trust me, you will lose them if you aren't careful. Then you're gonna unscrew this part, okay? It takes uh, quite a few turns to get it apart. Okay, now if I'm cleaning my brush, um, this is a part that I'm gonna throw in the cleaner. So um, right here I have lacquer thinner and I have another brush soaking in here. Uh, but if you use water-based paints, you're going to want to use some kind of alcohol, be it um, isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol, to soak your airbrush parts. So I would stick this in there, but I'm just going to put it in this cup since I, this is already clean. Same here. This you don't you can soak it if it's gunky, but you don't have to. Mine was really bad, so I soaked all my parts. It's pretty clean now. Then you're going to take out this little trigger pull mechanism. Okay, and now you're going to take off your um, I use quick disconnects, so I have an adapter that I use to um, connect to my quick disconnect. So I'm going to take that off. There's a seal inside this quick disconnect. It's a tiny seal. I have lost almost all my seals for all my brushes. It's black and it's normally inside there, but it's missing on this brush. Um, you can use, if you have some air leak issues, you can always use a little Teflon tape right there to get, um, to get that to... Uh, seal better if you lose that that seal otherwise you can buy new ones on usaairbrush.com um but i lose them a lot so i just use teflon tape if i have problems usually it doesn't cause a problem but if it does then you'll unscrew and some of these parts are really tight so you might need like a little bit of a pliers or something to hold it tight while you unscrew it this is the the valve plunger mechanism so you're going to take your finger on this little point pointed tip and you're going to push this out. It might be kind of actually, sorry, I missed a step. First, you're going to screw off this tiny little gold piece at the bottom. And again, if you have trouble gripping it, you might just use a pliers to take it off. There's a little spring in here. Okay. And you'll lose this spring in a hurry. If you aren't careful, this is how tiny it is. Okay. Can you see that? So you don't want to lose those. I have a bunch of spares because once you drop them, you'll never find them again. So stick that in the cup, stick that little cover in the cup, and then um, push your plunger mechanism out. Now, if you can't get it to go, you might wanna use like a toothpick or something and just push it through carefully. There's a little plunger on that that'll kind of hold it in place. If this plunger seal is damaged, you might need to replace it. You just have to buy this little piece. It's on usaairbrush.com as well. Um, so you'll throw that in there. Now the plunger mechanism can get kind of gunked up, so you can soak this as well if you want to. Um, but if it seems pretty clean, you can just throw it in the cup. And then now that part's done. So you're going to want to take off the nozzle. So you'll take that cap off. You can also, um, you can take the air adjust off if you want. I Personally, do not use this air adjust. Um, I, I just don't use it. So um, I don't usually take it off, but you can unscrew this as well if you want to. And you can put this, it's probably really dirty under here because I don't, I don't ever take it off. But you can also put this, you know, in a cup too uh, and clean it. You can soak it too. And then you have two pieces here to your nozzle cap. So this is the tip cover you can take off. So those two screw apart. Okay, and then you'll pop, you'll push this gently through and you'll pop out your nozzle. So this little nozzle here, you might want to soak that as well in your cleaner, okay? This is a tool that I use to clean that out. This is a reaming tool. You can get these on Amazon and you just kind of scrape gently around the inside with this um, so you don't wreck your needle doing it. Okay, so soak that, soak this. There's some little holes inside there that's part of all the airflow. So if those are clogged, these tiny little holes around the inside perimeter, 
you can just take this and kind of poke through those holes and twist a little bit just to make sure there's not any block blockages there. Um, and then, you know, it comes through on the other side kind of, so you just need to make sure those little holes are not clogged also. All right, now you have your, your gun body only now, okay? You can, you're not supposed to soak this because there's a Teflon, um, uh, needle bearing inside of here and it can be damaged by solvents. However, I am going to say I will soak mine for short periods of time. And then um, I do run these little textured cleaning rods through it. You're not supposed to. If Ken from Badger sees this video, he will probably call me and tell me to stop because <laughs> he's already told me that in person. But um, you can just kind of make sure you're not forcing it through, but you can run it through and then wipe it off with a paper towel and just keep doing that until you get whatever paint or gunk in there that is caked inside that um, Teflon bearing. It can make it hard for your needle to move forward and back sometimes if you get paint in there. Um, so I had to break mine down for that very reason. Usually I'll let my brush get trashed, but once that gets dirty, it, it kind of is hard to um, keep spraying because your needle won't go back in place. Okay, so once you get everything cleaned and scraped out, Q-tips are your friend. They'll get in the little places. Same with these tiny little brush tools. This is all a kit on Amazon, okay? And then um, these all comes together in one little kit. It's like less than 10 bucks. So those are invaluable. You can clean little little spaces with these little scrub brushes. Mine's kind of wore out. Um, and then and Q-tips. So let's put it back together real quick. I'll show you just a quick um, way to put it back together. Again, make sure you're not losing pieces, okay? So let's grab the little nozzle, place it in there, and then screw your big cap over that. Then you're gonna take the tip cap and you're gonna screw that on, okay? Now we are going to put back the plunger mechanism. So you're gonna take your plunger mechanism body and you are going to put uh sorry <clears throat> I'm trying to remember which way I'm going here you're going to put your plunger thingy back in there tip down towards the long side and you'll probably need to push that in with a little toothpick or something until it's seated properly you'll push that through so it's sticking out on the end then you're going to take your little tiny spring and you're going to put it right in there on top of that. Then you're gonna take your tiny little gold cap here, okay? And you're gonna screw that back in and then make sure it's tight. So, cause sometimes when you take off your, your um, if you use quick, quick disconnects, sometimes it'll take that cap with you with it when you unscrew it. And then it'll um, in turn cause you to lose your spring. I've done that more times than I can count. So you'll screw this back on. So we're screwing back in the plunger mechanism. And then you're gonna go ahead and reconnect your quick disconnect if you use one. If you don't, no worries. Then we're gonna put this mechanism back together. So this is spring loaded as well. The spring is buried inside of this barrel. So you're gonna need to line it up, right, so that you're pulling and pushing here. Now you're gonna to have to kind of hold it back. So you don't want it like this when you screw it in, you wanna hold it back, okay? And then you're gonna screw it in while you hold it back. It's kind of tricky, it's kind of annoying, but if you let go too soon, then you'll run into the problem where the trigger will block you screwing it in any further. So now you gotta put this back in, right? That little, I just lost it, sorry. This little um, trigger pull mechanism, it goes with the concave surface in the same shape as the bowl, and then put the trigger back in with the holes facing the back. So you wanna make sure that that little hole is facing the back, right on top of your plunger. Okay, now the reason why you wanna put that there first is so that you make sure you have enough room for that, right? So just hold that in while you screw this in and it's a little bit awkward. Once you get it in about halfway, you can let go of the plunger mechanism and then just finish screwing it. 
sometimes if it gets uh, out of alignment, you know, the, the spring will push this piece forward and it'll get out of alignment and then it won't seat properly. So screw that back in all the way till it's tight. Okay, then you're gonna put your needle chuck on just loosely and we're gonna screw back on this little tiny, um, I don't even remember what that thing is called to be real honest with you, I forget. <laughs> then you're gonna take your needle and you're just gonna slide it in, tighten this up really, not too hard, but you know, tight. And then screw your cap back on. And then you should have a fully functional clean airbrush. So if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'm happy to help. There's supposed to be a little um, seal that goes right here. I don't even replace it. It's cosmetic. So um, no need to worry about that. Um, if you happen to dislodge uh, or damage one of the Teflon needle bearings in here, you can get a kit to replace them. Um, so that's why I don't get too bad out of shape about how I clean it because you can always replace those. So hope you all found this helpful. Give me a like, give me a follow and hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.